Did the polar ice caps melt during the cataclysm? Probably. If you take a look at the globe in the halls of lightning, you can very distinctly see both northern and southern ice caps, as well as Kalimdor, the eastern kingdoms, and Northrend. The globe was most likely made by either Loken or one of his subordinates, and they better than anyone else know what the world should look like after the Sundering. It doesn't have Pandaria on it, but Pandaria was covered in mist almost immediately after the Sundering, if not during the world breaking apart, so I'll give the Titan Watchers a pass on that for not including it on the globe. Now take a look at these screenshots of the globe Rathian summons in Mist of Pandaria after gaining forbidden Titan Watcher knowledge. You can see a distinct lack of polar ice caps, since there wasn't really new globes of the world made in Warlords. This is the newest globe created by the aspect of Earth, who should know where everything is at. And it takes place after the Cataclysm. What this means is that the polar ice caps either melted when Deathwing broke out and started wreaking havoc, or Blizzard just kind of forgot to include them on Rathian's globe, since the globes in Karazhan and Old War also have the polar ice caps. So Rathian is either shit at making globes, or the polar ice caps melted during the Cataclysm. Just what is this piece of land behind the Eastern Plaguelands? Well, it's Stratholm. Stratholm was actually huge, way bigger than what's in game, and Stratholm was a coastal city in Warcraft 3. Just take a look at this map on screen. So it only makes sense for the landmass right behind a coastal city to simply be part of the city. As to why it's blocked off? Well, good question. Maybe Blizzard will change their mind about what's going to be there and put something there later on. It could happen. Oldham was on the map since Alpha WoW, and you couldn't get there until Cataclysm. But the landmass was in the game. There just wasn't anything there but a textured land. Just like the landmass behind the Eastern Plaguelands, it's there in game. You can take a look at it, but there isn't anything there but mountains and a small island with night elf architecture ruins. Why are there so many demons on Azeroth? If you look at Azeroth, there seems to be demons in almost every zone somewhere. All the demons in the world are actually aliens though. Each one was summoned by either warlocks or other demons, and the other demons who summoned more demons most likely came from the Third War and are just left over from Archimon's invasion. Demons are Azeroth's most prominent non-native species. What happens to souls used by soul stones? Well, there is a theory that the souls are set to burn in a hell-like existence for eternity. Or the souls cease to exist, a fate worse than death in the Warcraft universe where ghosts and souls exist as canon. And warlocks sure do love to use their soul stones. Just think about that next time you play your warlock. Well, it's probably not so bad now, since I think only one of the specs of warlocks even uses soul stones anymore. But in the past, they were needed to do a ton of warlock spells. Also, most warlocks and demon portals are powered by souls. I think there's a part of the Demon Hunter starting zone where you can kill yourself to power a portal. What are these whale bones doing in Vashir? Off the coast of the abandoned reef in Vashir, far out into the fatigue zone are giant bones of what's probably a whale, or some other sea creature. But what's even more weird is the giant pearl behind the bones. Just a big ass pearl in the middle of the ocean next to mysterious bones. I can't even begin to guess what that's about, it's probably old gods. Inzoth, most likely. I mean, look at these random whales being attacked by tentacles. That's probably what happened out there, but I have no idea why there's a giant ass pearl. Why is Oldham a desert? This isn't really a mystery if you know even a tiny bit about lore. And you know the fact that two of its adjacent zones are also deserts. But it actually used to be a huge ass forest brimming with life. When Lei Shen the Thunder King came to Oldham to take it over, the Tolvir activated the Doomsday weapon over a tiny radius around them, which instantly killed the Thunder King and his army, as well as literally everything else, turning the zone into a wasteland instantly. The weapon in Oldham was designed to be used to destroy all life on the world in case Azeroth needed a reset button and Algalon the Observer was trying to activate the weapon when he wanted to re-originate the planet before we stop him. 
Just what did go down in Tolbarad? Tolbarad was an island nation burned to the ground by the orcs during the Second War. After the war ended, a couple of mages decided to turn it into a prison since everyone who used to live there was now dead and it was kind of free for the taking. The mages who ran the prison though were very secretive about who they kept as prisoners and didn't let anyone know their names or even come close to the island. Then about 20 years later, after the Cataclysm moved some stuff around and all of a sudden the Alliance and Horde found the island again and decided to claim it since it was in a very strategic location. Only, when they came ashore, they found that the mages who ran the prison had just disappeared. And the prisoners were still there, rotting in their cells, some still alive. And of the people left behind, none of them will talk about what happened, or what they did to end up on the island prison in the first place. So just, what did happen on Tol Barad? Where did the mages go? If you do the daily quest on the island, it just adds to the mystery and doesn't explain at all what happened. There are some theories as to what could have happened. There are many crashed ships around the coast, and an entire town made up of criminals and thieves. So pirates could have raided the island and killed all the mages, and just left the prisoners in their cells to rot, since some of them are hella strong demons. Or alternatively, it could have all been the work of an old god. No real reason to suspect that, but all of the soldiers in Ferris and Hold are crazy. So maybe they killed the mages, or made them flee? Who knows, it's all one big mystery that will probably never be answered since Tolbrod was never really liked anyway. The battleground was bullshit. The defending team had such a huge advantage it wasn't even fair. Is everything just trolls? Out of all the playable races, three of them evolved from trolls. Well, I guess trolls are still just trolls. Night Elves were night trolls that evolved thanks to the Well of Eternity. Blood Elves are just night elves who change thanks to the Sun Well. Of the remaining races, only three others are actually native to Azeroth, the Tauren, Goblins, and Pandaren. The Drenai and Orcs are space aliens. Human dwarves and gnomes evolved from titan constructs afflicted by the curse of flesh. And Undead and Worgen are just humans. Well, Undead can technically be anything, but the ones that are playable in WoW were all once humans. How old is Silas Darkmoon from the Darkmoon Fair? He's most likely thousands of years old, or some kind of dreadlord. Well, he's probably not a dreadlord, honestly, but he might be thousands of years old. If you die on the Darkmoon Island and wander around as a ghost, you can run into and talk to different people who died on the island. One of the ghosts you can talk to was Brendan Paulson, and some of his quotes really raise a few questions about Silas. I ran away from my home in Strom after my father tried to kill me. I joined the fair as a child. I remember telling Xylus, I never want to see my family again. Now, what this means is that Brendan ran away from Strom and joined the fair with Silas when he was a child, and presumably worked at the fair for the rest of his life. The thing that raises questions is the fact that Brendan said he ran away from his home in Strom. Only. Strom ceased to exist 1200 years ago when the nobility left it to found Stormwind and those who remained renamed it to Stromgard. Unless Brendan's talking about a different leader of the Darkmoon Fair with the same exact name as the current one, it's pretty safe to assume he's talking about the gnome who currently runs the fair. And I don't know if you know this or not, but gnomes have about the same lifespan as humans. So just what is Silas, and how old is he really? No one knows, and no one will probably ever find out because he's also pretty shifty as fuck. What is on the back of Azeroth? All maps of Azeroth pretty much have the same feature. Kalimdor to the left, Eastern Kingdoms to the right, with the Maelstrom in the middle. Every single route in the game, whether it be by boat or zeppelin, takes you across the Great Sea. But according to most globes in the world, including the one presumably made by Titan Keepers in Old War and Halls of Lightning, the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor aren't that far apart from each other on both sides. And you should really be able to sell by either the Veiled Sea or the Forbidding Sea to the other side while not having to deal at all with the Maelstrom. So why do the citizens of Azeroth risk sailing past the Maelstrom to travel rather than just use the backside of the planet? Well, because it's largely unexplored and there's probably something back there. It's not a total foreign concept in the WoW universe to have a hidden island. I mean, just take a look at Pandaria, or to a lesser extent, Darkmoon Fair Island. Pandaria was hidden from the rest of the world for almost 10,000 years, 
and no one knows exactly where the Dark Moon Fair is located. The only way to get there is by a portal, but there is also a ton of crashed boats along its shore, so you know it exists out in Azeroth somewhere. But that stands to question, if there's something back there, why don't the Titan Keepers know about it? And well, that can also be answered by Pandaria. After the Great Sundering, as I mentioned earlier in this video, it was almost immediately hidden from the rest of the world, and it can be logically reasoned that the Keepers only included land on their globes that they knew about from the Sundering. Which could mean that there was another continent on the back side of the world before the Sundering broke apart the huge supercontinent, and they just never bothered to look on the back side. Or that there wasn't anything there of importance and they just forgot about it. Or that the back side is just a collection of small islands that were not important enough to include on the globe. Hell, the Broken Isles don't even appear on the Titan Globes, and those have been known to exist since Warcraft 2 or 3. All that really means is that you can't really trust any of the globes in game, as they only show what was available during their expansions that brought them into existence. So the possibility of an entire unexplored continent behind the world, or a collection of small islands is within a very good realm of possibility, and could be introduced down the road in later expansions. Maybe World of Warcraft Columbus Exploration. Let's try not to murder all the natives.